If you're tired of feeling stuck in project management, or I should say your project management journey, and want to stand out from the crowd, the resumes, the uh, promotions, then this episode is a absolute must watch. In this game changing strategy approach to the CAPM certification, we're not just sharing the basics here. You know we don't do basic. We do tips and tricks where we're gonna do a deep dive on some proven techniques and insider secrets that only if you were a project manager or lived this project management life, you get where I'm going with this. But anyway, family, I wanna transform your mindset from a CAPM novice to a project management rock star. If you're new to the channel, I go by the name of ED. For all you smart and intelligent folks out there, that just simply means that I have an eight point framework in these eight points. My goal, my job, my mission is to unpack today's title, which is entitled how do you get the most out of your certified associate in project management or what we call cap M. You mind if I share a story with you family? Um, the reason why this came about is because of the fact that I see a lot of people that are going after their cap M or have already obtained or may recently have just obtained their cap M. And what I notice is the same thing that I did what was wrong. And I want to share those with you. And these are things that you won't even see people share a lot because it's not that it's embarrassing. It's the fact that they're like, why didn't I think about it? And then at that point they moved on and probably forgot about it. But for me, I remember this because it was painful. What do you mean, Ed? What, what is the story about? Where are you going with this? What I am saying is, is that a lot of times when when you're going after your cap M, what is your game plan? What happens when you get your cap M? Okay, congratulations, you got it. What's next? What what should have you been doing in between as you were going after your cap M? That is what we're going to unpack today. Meaning, as you're going after your cap M, or even if you have your cap M, what can you do now um, so you can ensure your success later? So my very first point family is let's celebrate you. Let's celebrate you because I want to celebrate you because I know the journey, what it looks like to go after your cap M because it's not as easy as people make it seem. You know, they always say the PMP is extremely hard and the cap M, oh, that's just a walk in the park because you have to re you just memorize things. It's just not that easy. And for those that are currently in the process and those that really respected the process, they understand that it wasn't as e easy as well. So first of all, I really truly want to celebrate you. First, I want to celebrate you because you are on this journey. Second, I want to celebrate you of those who've already ob obtained their cap M. But once you do obta uh, 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 obtain it, you want to be able to post this in your network, um, you know, in your LinkedIn network, let employers, you know, let future employers know, uh, demonstrate with stakeholders your commitment to actual project management excellence. Ensure the very first thing that you want to do is update your resume, your LinkedIn profile, um, your email signature as well. Um, and also, if you talk about anything socially, put it on your social uh, media as well. All right, let's move into point number two. Point number two, set clear goals. Message. Listen, family, anytime I, if you're new to the channel, anytime that I say message, that means this is something important. This is something you want to lock in. This is something that you want to grab you a piece of pen or a piece of pen. This is who you want to grab a pen and a piece of paper and write this out. If you don't have a pen, go get a pencil. If you don't have a pencil, go get a crayon. I don't care. Just rewind this part back here if you don't remember. But for, seriously, family, point number two is set clear career goals. Family, when I was going after my cap M, I didn't have a clear goal. Only goal that I had, well, that's not true because I did have a clear goal. It was get my cap M. But Looking back at this, this is what I wish I would have done. I don't have any regrets, but I want to help the next person that is actually either going after their cap M or currently are, you know, just recently got it within the last six months to a year. Very first thing you want to be able to do 
is understand what do you, why are you going after this cap and what is it going to do to you? And this is what I'm going to challenge you with. I'm going to challenge you with the video that I did yesterday in live that I did where I talked about the, the five uh, whys. If I'll unpack that real quick. When you say, I'm, I'm going after my, my cap M, I'm going to say, why? Well, I'm going after my cap M because I want to be able to find a better job. Why? Because I want to be able to make more money. Why? Because I want to be able to take care of my family. Why? You see where I'm going? So that's the five why, because the whole purpose of these five whys is to get to the Really, what are you, you actually doing this for? Like, because I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you during this journey, you're going to have some challenges. There's going to be life maybe may interrupt you. Um, you may interrupt yourself by saying, you know, I don't even know if it's worth it. So I ask of you family, if you to define a short term and a long term goal. So again, short term and long term career goal in project management and determine how the CAPM certification aligns with these objectives. Update again, I already said it earlier, but I'm going to keep reiterating this. Update your LinkedIn profile. Understand um, if you have anything that you, um, another thing, start collect, making a portfolio of your work. Now, there may be some things you're not un unable to share because of company uh, or company or organizational policies. But you want to get in a place where you're able to actually do that. And then from there, what you want to be able to do is start creating a career roadmap. It doesn't have to be nothing fancy. It could be a, a piece of paper where it says, hey, these are the five things I want to accomplish this quarter or this year and really go after those things. Here's another tip. I'm just because I, I want to make sure you get the best here, family. You know, I want to over deliver. Um, I want to disrupt. We already know we're, I'm trying to disrupt project management in a healthy way to help people that um, I'm just pulling back the curtain, as they would say, so you can see what is actually going on. OK, here we go. Here's a really crucial tip. Start researching job listings and career paths of successful project managers in your industry to understand a couple things here, family skills experiences and any additional certifications that may be valuable for you uh, in this career path that you've chosen because as we know uh, project management is 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 you can work in so many different industries and that's what I love about it all right family let's move on to point number three point number three you just need to understand the cap M certification um, what are the benefits uh, look at the, a lot of times what I see people do when they go after the CAPM, uh, they don't even look at the, the CAPM handbook or they don't even look at the exam content outline. I, I, it's just, it baffles me because PMI is literally saying, Hey, this is what is going to be on the test, but you have to read it. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it's really a good tool to use. So go on to PMI.org, look up the CAPM information. You'll be able to pull that. If you don't know where it is, put it in the comment. I'll, I'll personally get the link for you if you don't know how to find it or where it's at because I want to I want to make sure that I can serve you in a way to have the best success for yourself. So again, read the CAPM handbook, familiarize yourself with the certification requirements, exam content outline, as well as the recertification process because sometimes you'll forget that, okay, I got to recertify in so many, uh, many uh, years and things like that. And here's a really good tip. Um, one of the things that I did was, and I, I'm not as active as I should be, but attend a PMI chapter meeting or webinar to learn from certified professionals so you can gain some insights or you can just tune in with your boy here. You know I'm going to take care of you. If there's a video you're looking for or an episode, I should say, that you're looking for, hey, send me a message. You know how to get a hold of me. Let's move on to point number four. Develop soft skills. You know, I said I'm going to go out and find a new word for soft skills, but really you want to be able to improve or enhance your soft skills such as communication, leadership, problem solving, um, conflict resolution, uh, teamwork. And these are all critical for project management success because projects are led and driven by people. And so with any time when people are in the place, you're going to have different opinions of different things. You're going to have different ways people would like to be communicated to. You're going to have different leadership styles uh, that you're going to have to deal with. So what I recommend to you, here's another tip. Practice applying 
your soft skills in various project management scenarios, such as leading a team meeting, uh, resolving conflicts, or even just presenting to stakeholders just to see kind of what the feedback is. Because again, family, this is all practice. You want to get as much practice as you can, especially when you get your cap in. Sometimes they, you start as a project coordinator. Other times you could be a project manager and you just wanted to get your cap in as a stepping stone to the next thing, which is the PMP. However, you want to be able to practice these things and, and so you can become actually uh, go to the next level. Let's move on to point number five. A message. I'm sorry, we're having a lot of messages here, family. But listen, honestly, apply CAPM knowledge in your work. I was just reading something um, earlier today. I forgot the, the name of it or whatever, but it was something that was very powerful that I want to um, download to you right now. They said a lot of times people will consume a lot of information and not apply it. And that's why I always say, you know, when people say, yeah, uh, knowledge is a power and I just shake my head and I said, no, that's not true. I said applied knowledge is power. So I challenge you family to apply the knowledge you're learning or have learned regarding the cap mem. Listen, look for opportunities where you can do this in your current role or go and volunteer at a, a particular uh for a particular opportunity and sometimes people take volunteer and I'm going to touch on that uh, later on uh, but seriously family identify areas in your work where you can implement CAPM concepts tools techniques such as creating a project charter developing a WBS or what we call a work breakdown structure and also one of another big artifacts is a risk assessment so again family find ways that you can practice this because just think about this if if you're getting ready to take the cap in and you just start practicing the things that you learn when you are taking the cap in it's going to make more sense it's going to click for you so i recommend that you apply your cap in knowledge in your work let's move on to point number six point number six seek a seek mentorship opportunities listen family by me getting a mentor a coach and a trainer. It is really, uh, I really found a shortcut. Now, when I identify a shortcut, I am not talking about taking a shortcut because I don't want to do the work. No, 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 no. I am talking about a shortcut in which I have an opportunity to learn some, to learn from somebody that has already been through of where I am going. Does that make sense? Okay, let me, you don't like that one. How about this? Getting a mentor allows me to see where my blind spots are compared to me going alone in the journey. So uh, by getting, when you work with a mentor and they get to know you and they then they start being able to understand some of your blind spots. They'll also be able to guide you when you say, hey, you know, I'm gonna go look for, I'm gonna go uh, thinking about applying for this opportunity, great. And you get the interview and then they say, hey, let's do a mock interview together and I'm gonna be extremely hard on you because if I'm hard on you, when you walk into the interview, if it's a soft interview, then you're gonna, this is gonna be easy. And also let me position you to give you the right questions. Uh, so this is mentorship, getting feedback, getting guidance, getting constructive criticism. You need this when you're making the decision to actually get in this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with called project management. Let's move on to point number seven. Point number seven, listen, this is one of the things I always recommend. I say, hey, I say, if I would have done this differently, I would have, after I finished my cap M, I probably would, no, I would have, not probably, I would have just started studying very light, but started studying the PMP. So point number seven is pursue the PMP certification. Listen, one of the things after you get your cap BIM, if you have the qualifications to sit and pass the PMP, I would get started right away. I wouldn't put it off. I wouldn't wait. This again, if you have the qualifications to apply to get the PMP. Why do I say that? Because you're already in study mode. You're already in, you're already focused and locked in. So being able to ride that success of sitting and passing your cap M, I'll say just get started and start studying for your PMP. If this is the way where your where you want your career to go. If not, then hey, again, congratulations to you. So I challenge you, family, to do as soon as you finish your cap M to start the process. And if you don't qualify, because I know people are out there like, well, hey, I don't even, I mean, I only got a year of experience of project management or even less than a year. I wouldn't even qualify the, for the PMP right now. 
again, I would recommend to you as part of that plan that we talked about, that career plan, I would start saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to work, since there's nine, uh, 10 knowledge areas, I'm going to work on a knowledge area each day. Knowledge area, integration, knowledge area, scope, and uh, knowledge area time. So all I'm saying is, is, is study slowly while you're learning the information. So that way, by the time when it's, you're ready a, a, a couple years or two or three years out, it's, you, you, as they as they say, you'll hit the ground running because you're already you've been studying not as aggressive as you was with the cap M, but now that you've been studying over time, when you really lock in to to, to study and spend more time with it, you won't you won't be so far you won't it won't feel like you're starting over from scratch. So again, pursue your PMP certification if you qualify for it. And point number eight, volunteer for project management roles. Every time I bring that up and talk about it, I, th I think to myself now. I think sometimes we get caught up in volunteering, meaning, oh, I'm going to go volunteer for somebody. No, what I'm saying is if you work, uh, if you work for a corporation, organization or whatever, see if you can connect. If they have a project management office, see if you can connect with the director or whoever is over the, uh, the PMO and ask them, hey, is it possible that I could volunteer on some projects and say I only this is the bandwidth that I have as far as and this is I'm just being honest with you family this may cost you something and, and it's gonna cost you something meaning that you may have to give up your lunch or you may have to come in earlier and work you know an hour uh, before your actual shift or what you're supposed to be doing starts or an hour afterward listen I'm gonna tell you this if someone came to me and I am the PMO I'm over a PMO and I have someone that is um, pursuing their cap M or already has their cap M and they want to be go from a project coordinator to project manager I'm gonna work with them and say listen um, you can volunteer by hey could you work with that project manager and what I'm gonna ask of you is these things or what are some of the things you feel like you want to work on um, and so you want to work the, the thing about this family I don't want you to get it confused of that is the proper way to do it. I know a lot of times you want to go outside the organization, but being able to go inside the organization, especially if you've been there, it's an easier opportunity because they know of you in some sort, and then they'll see your ambition and going to want to say, you know, we, we want to help this person get to that next level of project management. I got two bonuses for you, and then I'm gone. Point uh, Bonus number one. Contribute to the project management community. This is exactly what I'm doing here. I make a lot of content around project management. Why do I do that? First of all, because I love it. Second of all, I really want to help those that when I was coming up in this uh, this thing called project management, there wasn't the content of some some of the content out there that wasn't wasn't that great. And when I mean it wasn't that great, they talked about the artifacts, the more of the theory stuff. Where here. I try to I try to keep it balanced, but I really more or less talk about real life. Meaning, when I'm telling you, hey, before you take your cap M, have a plan of when once you get your cap M, how are you going to go after looking for jobs? How many job opportunities are looking for someone with a cap M? These are the type of things that I I was just blind at. Like I you know I was like, oh, I got my cap M, and I was so excited. I was like, oh, okay, now what's next? Next. I should have had those answers to the question of what's next, meaning was I going to stay at the organization that I'm currently at or did I plan on leaving once I got my cap in? And then again, to the, to the community, Magnetic Project Manager, I have two more books that are coming, The Magnetic PMO as well as The Magnetic Ap Apprentice. The Magnetic Apprentice is really around helping someone that is new to this thing that I love, that I hope you fall in love with, called Project Management. These are two books that I've been working on that should be dropping extremely soon. And if you're interested, drop a comment and say interested. Anyway, um, going back to contributing to the project management community, this is just very important of being able to give back to those that poured into you. Phil, shout out to you. Scott, shout out to you. These are people that poured into me uh, as uh, as I was going after my PMP, as I was going after my cap them. And just all my mentors around project management in general. So again, family, you wanna be able to do that and give back. Here's my last and final bonus. 
Don't stop. Trust the journey. Listen, I don't know how many people I've seen start and stop going after their cap M. I don't know how many people I've seen after they got their cap M. They felt even they felt stuck. They felt like they didn't accomplish anything. And I don't want that for you. I want you to trust the journey. If if, if you really want to stick with this thing called project management, go after your PMP. If you don't want to go after your PMP, fine. But understand what your understand what your game plan is so that way you're not disappointed or you feel some kind of way. Because sometimes we can beat ourselves up because we felt it should have been more, should have been more excitement, more balloons and everything. But I digress. Point I'm trying to make, family, is the ability to be able to focus on what are my next steps in this journey? And you may not get them right. It's not up to you to get them right. It's up to you to make a decision. And then once you go through that decision, say, okay, that's not it. All right. We'll be adaptable and, agi- and have agility. We'll just pivot. So please, family, when you take on this journey, don't stop. Um, trust the journey. I know it's a long journey when you're going after your cap M. I know some people have been able to get their cap M in 48 hours or one week, but I know that's not you. And that's not how you want to do it. You know, you want to be able to understand and digest the information. So again, you can apply the information to your job. Here's my three closing remarks. Set clear career goals. I said that before family, the importance of being able to set clear, uh, career goals, meaning updating your resume, updating your LinkedIn profile, understanding, doing a job search to see, hey, what is is the price point for uh, someone with a cap M that has X amount? Do your homework and and make a decision. If already have these decisions lined up when you sit and pass your test, if you, the organization you're at, are you going to stay or are you going, going to leave? Point number two, apply your cap M knowledge in your work. That's what, you remember what I said earlier. They said, well, um, knowledge is a power and knowledge is power. And I, again, knowledge is not powered. Applied knowledge is power. So again, look for opportunities where you can apply what you've been learning, um, during your journey and after your journey. And then the final and and final thing is seek mentorship opportunity. Family is going to be imperative. It's going to be important. It's going to be dire that you get you a mentor that can assist you along your journey. I truly hope you enjoyed today's episode. I enjoy giving it, uh, delivering it today. Thank you for this opportunity. I don't take it lightly. Anytime you leave me a comment, anytime you hit like or subscribe to the channel or listen to the podcast, I'm I'm so humbled and grateful because I started at this probably a year ago of putting peer project management content out. So I'm super grateful to you guys. I think I want to do like a grateful show where we just we just hang out and you come on a live if you want to and ask me questions. So I'm still working through those kinks. But again, I truly appreciate you. I hope you guys have a great and amazing day. Until next time, you know my slogan. I'm out. <laughs>